Rescue crews have stopped the search mission tonight for the body of a pilot presumed dead after a mid-air collision with another plane this weekend in the Everglades. A BSO deputy stumbles on a pair of perps selling a whole lot of junk in their trunk in a Walmart parking lot. The highest-ranking Cuban-American in state government has announced his pick for the next president of the United States. Mass robbers storm a South Florida drugstore looking to score quick cash at gunpoint, but one officer was all over it confronting the suspects in the parking lot. A former Miami Heat star is arrested in Miami following a fight with another man. Glenn Rice allegedly confronted the man at the home of Rice's estranged wife. Today, the federal government unveiled new details on its Real ID program. It's aimed at keeping terrorists and illegal immigrants from getting driver's licenses. Police in North Carolina believe they have found the body of a pregnant Marine who has been missing for more than a month. And Adam, I don't get this. The Heat won and they lost both on the same day. Explain yeah, this Yeah, I know. To it me, sounds please. crazy. It needs an explanation. Mm -hmm. That's what we do in sports. That's We're going to explain do. that. Well, the untimely death of Australian-born actor Heath Ledger has stunned the entertainment world. Another celebrity gone too soon, this time at the age of 28. And New York police say his death may have been caused by an accidental drug overdose. And according to our sister station, WNBC in New York, a relative of Ledger was quoted saying he had the flu or pneumonia. However, that has not been confirmed by police. An autopsy is scheduled to take place tomorrow. In the aftermath of mass killings across the country and the holiday season, one local agency is beefing up security. The Brown Sheriff's Office is implementing an operation plan and to increase security at shopping areas. The announcement was made in front of a jubilant crowd at American University in Washington, D.C. today. One of America's iconic political families endorses Barack Obama and at the same time turned their back on the Clintons. Saying Obama also picked up another surprising endorsement from a longtime Clinton supporter, author Toni Morrison, who once dubbed Bill Clinton as America's first black president. Well, ladies, this is a high-stakes race with Obama and Clinton shaking the politics of identity. So. How does gender play into this? Does it really matter? It matters because this is the first time we've had a woman who's making a run for president. What you just saw was only a part of an extended discussion of politics, race, and global issues. But analysis and discussion aside, it all boils down to our choice and the things that shape them. And soon, many of us are going to exercise that choice, the vote, a simple but fundamental part of our American freedom. Well, the program was announced by Governor Charlie Chris today right here in South Florida. It's set to bring significant savings to people who struggle to have a good quality of life. It's very important for, for, for everybody they, they need help. Maria Martinez is talking about prescription drugs that may now be more affordable for millions of Floridians like Martinez's father. Maybe, maybe uh, 800, 900 maybe at one thousand dollars because one yeah one medicine he need to pay three three fifty for only one medicine we come bearing good news at a Publix in Kendall Thursday Governor Charlie Chris shared the good news unveiling the Florida discount drug card for people 60 and older and others who cannot afford prescription drugs very expensive mm -hmm. and she doesn't have it Thanks to this new state plan, many folks will no longer have to worry about where their funds will come from. They'll be able to save between 5 and 42 percent on many drugs. More than 3,000 pharmacies in the state are participating, and the program goes into effect immediately. Can I listen to your heart for a minute? Governor Chris says nearly 4 million Floridians will benefit from the cards, and it won't cost the state a cent. The only fee is a one-time $1.50 activation charge tacked on to the cost of the first prescription. I'm just blessed to have an administration full of talented people that negotiated so very well for over a year to be able to bring this to fruition and present it before Christmas this year. And for more on the prescription drug plan, you can log on to our website, NBC6.net, and click on the story under local news. We will also connect you to the state's website on the program. Well, this round goes to the people. Venezuelans vote to reject President Hugo Chavez's proposed overhaul to the Constitution. It's Chavez's first major electoral defeat in the nine years of his presidency. But his fight may be far from over. There was cheering and celebrating on the streets of Caracas, Venezuela, as voters there rejected President Hugo Chavez's controversial referendum that would have let him be president for life. Por el 
Humbled by his first political defeat, Chavez admitted he may have been too ambitious with his 69 proposed amendments to the Constitution. The changes would abolish term limits, declare states of emergency for unlimited periods, and increase the state's role in the economy, just to name a few. Monday, here in South Florida, Venezuelans were still glued to news broadcasts coming from their homeland. Many were surprised, yet relieved the people's voices were heard. This is a step forward. The voters rejected the amendments 51 to 49 percent. The referendum caps a year of bold moves by Chavez, who forged a single socialist party among his followers. But some experts say Chavez's quest for change is far from over. Chavez still is moving the country towards a socialist dictatorship. Our country was so under fire from an intense artillery fire of lies. But even with that, they had voted 49 percent for the socialist project. In spite of it all, it is a good political step, a great political leap. Gran salto politico. Chavez will remain in power until 2012. Meanwhile, election officials say the turnout was relatively low. Just 56 percent cast their votes.